Extreme resilience could drive people to become overly persistent with unattainable goals. This is a quote from the article, The Dark Side of Resilience, that shows how people can try and push themselves over the limit to try and achieve something that is unachievable. I'm Matthew Hansen, and athletes today tend to struggle with common injuries that seem to be no big deal, but tend to uh, end up being long ruling injuries that can impact the rest of their lives. Over the last 20 years, common occurrences of athletes' health being mistreated throughout, <coughs> throughout the NFL and other various sports has decreased the earn, career earnings an athlete can make and affected their overall well-being. The improper treatment of athletes can affect the, can cost them millions of dollars, lifelong pain, and a devastating condition that can make a major impact on someone's life. Some of the things we can do to fix these problems is to shorten the seasons. So, uh, another, sorry, another way we can fix this is by updating so safety protocols. MLB this offseason increase the base sizes, which they believe is expected to promote player safety. NBA athletes are constantly sitting out what they may call meaningless games to rest up despite what the media and fans say. One of the biggest solutions to this could be to increase research on CTE. Chronic, chronic traumatic encephalopathy is not known too much for, by doctors and scientists, and the quicker they know more information about this, the more that likely they are able to find other solutions. In order to find other solutions to CTE, scientists and doctors must first understand what CTE is. CTE is a, neuro, uh, CTE is a debilitating neurodegenerative disease which has been increasingly reported in athletes, especially American football players. This is a result of repetitive traumatic brain injuries. It is thought to cause a buildup of a protein called tau in the brain around the blood vessels. It is also a lifelong effect once developed and may leave you with de common devastating effects such as memory loss, depression, aggressive behavior, and sometimes suicidal thoughts. Here is a hit of former Cincinnati Bengals defender Fontes Perfect to the head of former Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver Antonio Brown. Fontes being Fontes, he took the moment as an opportunity to blow up Brown lowering his shoulder into Brown's head. The refs called a penalty, which ended up costing the Bengals the game. It's shots like this to the athlete's brain that lead to the eventual development of CTE. Fontes Burfick would go on to get suspended for this, and Antonio Brown to this day believes he is living with CTE. Although, despite what Antonio Brown says, doctors and scientists are not able to diagnose CTE until he has died. Here is a clip of Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa being slammed to the ground. In a game against the Buffalo Bills, Tua Tagovailoa returning to the field after taking a hit that left him stumbling. Oh, the then four days later on Thursday against the Cincinnati Bengals, Tua getting slammed to the ground, his fingers seizing in a... As you saw in the video, Tua Tagovailoa had shown the common symptoms of a concussion when he was stumbling over himself at the beginning of the video, and at the end of the video, he was lying on the ground with his fingers curled. This position is called the fencing position, which is a response that shows significant head trauma to the brain. This is significant because this concussion occurred the week after he had received another significant head injury. Repetitive head trauma like this forced Tua Tagovailoa to consider retirement, although he decided to keep on playing. One of the common mistakes associated with CTE is death. People don't understand that CTE doesn't kill the people, but it changes how you act, potentially leaving them with suicidal thoughts. Former NFL star Demarius Thomas died just days before his 34th birthday due to seizure complications. After his death, he was diagnosed with stage two CTE. Although CTE played no role in his death, his family before he had died had said that he had been suffering constant mood changes and other symptoms of CTE leading up to his death. Many other athletes have previously, uh, many other athletes have previously killed themselves because of the effect CT has had on them. But the main common effect of CT is the personality change. Moving on, moving on, an effect of mistreatment of athletes' health is potential money loss. NFL quarterback Tyrod Taylor was receiving a pain-killing injection for his, one of his fractured ribs before this game had started but then the doctor had gone too deep with the needle. This punctured one of Tyrod Taylor's lungs, forcing him to miss the game. This led to the face of the franchise, Justin Herbert, 
start the next game for them, showing the organization he is capable of taking this team to great things. This uh, listed Tyrod Taylor as a backup quarterback in the free agent market. So not only did this cost him a starting job, but because of this, he received a co contract next offseason designed for a backup quarterback, which instead of a uh, starting quarterback. Tyrod Taylor had press charges against the doctor for $5 million because he, of the loot making him lose his starting job and losing money, potentially losing money in a contract because of the doctor's negligence, carelessness, and other tortious, unlawful, and wrong acts. The average annual salary of a backup quarterback was two, an estimated $2.4 million, and the average annual salary of a starting quarterback was over $7 million. Another effect of mistreatment of athletes health can be on their overall health. Playing these sports can leave them damaged and hurt for the rest of their lives. Former Miami Dolphins defender Byron Jones took, uh, announced on social media in a post of good luck to this year's rookie class, revealing that he can no longer jump or run because of the injuries he had sustained from the NFL that were misproperly treated. Jones had said, much has changed in eight years. Today I can't run or jump because my injuries sustain playing this game. Do not take the pills they give you. Do not take the injections they give you. If you absolutely must, consult an outside doctor to learn the long-term implications. Jones having the ability to perform certain tasks was taken away from him because of the improper treatment he had received. Outside of the physical impact, players may also take an emotional toll from this. According to the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine, lower levels of self-esteem and sens sensation-seeking in athletes have been associated with greater risk of depression, anxiety, social anxiety, and negative physical symptoms all of which may impede physical performance. Athletes tend not to come out how they feel mentally, which is part of why this problem is still occurring. Some of the things ownership and league can do to promote player safety is to start by updating their safety protocols. After Tua Tagovailoa's concussion, to, uh, NFL had updated their concussion protocol to ensure after a brain injury, uh, the proper steps are taken to make sure the athlete is cared for. This could help with the prevention of CTE, although the only problem I stated before, CTE is not able to be diagnosed until after death. Another thing leagues can do is to shorten their seasons. The only problem with that is that shortening their seasons can end up for a loss of profit for leagues like the NBA and the MLB, which is why it has been discussed for so long and it uh, most likely will not happen. Another thing that the NBA has been doing is letting the players rest. The NBA players are constantly sitting out games to heal up and rest themselves, despite the constant backlash they receive from the media and the fans. Athletes need to start standing up for, for themselves and worrying about their health. Nobody deserves to have what they say about their health taken away from them. Thank you. All right, Matt, I got two questions for you. First up, how valid and reliable were the sources that you use, and then how do you know? Can you repeat the question, please? How valid and reliable were the sources that you use, and then how do you know? The sources I used mostly came from uh, sports articles, government-issued websites, and academic journals, which the sports articles, uh, they're practically a primary source for this type of information because they are the first ones to get this information. And academic journals is peer-reviewed, so it's uh, reliable. All right. And uh, what advice would you give to researchers who consider this topic in the future? For anyone to consider this topic in the future, I would say try and avoid some of the CTE because since CTE is still not known uh, by scientists and doctors, uh, there's a lot of ways you can go down with that topic. And if you spend too much time on it, there it will be a never-ending loop that you can't get.